Sproul ahead of Jensen, six tenths of a second is the margin. Rosenqvist ahead of Dennis, one second is the margin. Felix Rosenqvist is not out of the game yet, is he? And Trama oh. down at the bus stop. Julio Moreno is one of them. Kang Ling is another. Tatiana and Tatiana Calderon. Calderon has decided to take oh. somebody's it's her own wing that's stuck under the car and now she's stuck in the middle of the road and this will be a safety car won't it there are three of them to try and disentangle here and this is i fear going to be another interruption or an interruption uh, so the marshal is there to try and get the wing from underneath the car Here's the replay as Ling goes up the inside of Moreno and there's really nowhere for Tatiana Calderon to go and Whoa. Kang Ling came oh so close to having a headache there, didn't he? That oh so nearly tipped over. But I, you've got to say it was, it was Kang Ling's zealotry that triggered all of that. He uses Moreno as a ramp, that does for the suspension, doesn't it? And that'll rattle his fillings as, as he lands as well because that was quite a big impact. And poor old Tatiana Calderon. Just an innocent... Ob yeah, yeah, it's just can't... We've got nowhere to go. <laughs> Bang. Into the front of Julio Moreno's car. And Kang Ling is going to be reported to the stewards of the meeting for that. So he's dragged the car now to block pit in. <laughs> so this is going to go down well, isn't it, with the race director? Safety car. Uh, yes. No surprise there. And it's going to be Lance Stroll with about three lengths of an advantage, I would propose. But second and third, a nose to tail as the race gets back underway. Rosenqvist is closer to Jensen than Jensen is to Stroll as they break for La Source. Fourth is Jake Dennis. And a huge, huge lock up there by Kamara, who runs deep into the corner. And everybody scrabbles through. And that's Alban going up the inside. Whoa. Leans, I think, on Fittipaldi and elbows his way through. Alex Alban is on a mission as the three leaders then break away from Jake Dennis on the run uphill now. But a good restart made by Lance Stroll, who I think is enjoying life at the head of the field. Now, right up behind him is Mikkel Jensen. Third is Rosenqvist. Let's see who's the real mover in the pack this time. Put your money on Rosenqvist. Here he comes. Goes to the outside of Jensen. Jensen levels. Oh, oh they all make contact. And it's Rosenqvist who comes off worse. Broken suspension. Up the escape road. Into the barriers. Felix Rosenqvist is out of the race. Lance Stroll is out of the race. Mikkel Jensen is out of the race. Jake Dennis will take over the lead. The safety car is deployed once again. And that, I'm afraid, was pretty silly driving on the part of three people, all going for the same part of road at the same time. And all three of them are out of the race. And you can anticipate the stewards will have a good old look at that. We'll get a replay, no doubt. But on the first lap of the restart... You've got to say that even if your place was in jeopardy, there was enough time left in the race to fight back. And drivers were not fully aware, I wouldn't propose there, of their surroundings. Rosenqvist is absolutely furious because that's another crop of points that's gone begging. And he's got a damaged car into the bargain, which may not work so well for race three tomorrow. But Jensen and Stroll are out as well. And they have just thrown away yes. their best possible finishes of the season so far. And they have thrown it away. That was just... I mean, you made the point. That just was ridiculous, wasn't it? Lack of awareness. It's, it's just... Th th there's a hint of desperation that nobody wants to get overtaken, which I can understand. But the clever drivers will think, I'm going to lose out here, but I can fight back in a lap's time. I know what part of the circuit I'm going to be strong on. Rosenqvist, as I said before the start of the race, knows enough about Formula 3. Now, look, where's he expected to go? He's on the outside of the road, and it's Stroll, who just moves across. Pincers Jensen, Rosenqvist, the completely innocent party in that. Jensen didn't have a great deal to do because he either braked yes. and still could have been hit or he steered into Rosenqvist. So there's nothing he can do. It's Lance Stroll who just was determined to, to block at all costs. And there is the outcome. Three drivers' races wrecked. They're all under investigation. And Lance Stroll, who was the race leader... As I say, that was a, a kind of block at any cost. And even if he'd lost a place, maybe two, he'd have been able to use the slipstream in a lap's time and perhaps get the ground back again. There still seems to be, from drivers, this belief that this is just like it is on your PlayStation, where if you have a drama, you can press reset and it's all fine. It's not. This is real life, isn't it? Yeah. And Lance Stroll, as you can see from his overalls, is part of the Ferrari Driver Academy. And he's not covering himself in a huge amount of glory this year, is he, I'm afraid? Lance Stroll is re will be reported to the stewards of the meeting. And you have to say, that's the right call. So down they come through Bruxelles. And trackside, there are crippled Formula 3 cars. And Rosenqvist... I mean, 
that car was travelling at such yeah. a speed. Wasn't I was, was going to say, look how close he's fetched up to the escape road barriers. You know, that could have been another impact. But look at Stroll, completely oblivious to where everybody else is. And at this point, Rosenqvist, all he can do is put his foot on the brake and pray. He hits the barrier again, so that's two impacts he's had. And look how close he gets to the conveyor belt barriers there for a third. Again, it's a good advert for the strength of a Dallara chassis. Yes, it, it is. Nothing else. But it's a race that should have had a, a different feel to it, you've got to say. Replay of more dramas down at the bus stop. Nabil Jeffrey runs across the curbs and he takes that Sam McLeod with him. They all survive, and there's more contact and a huge moment this time coming up towards Le Combe. And that, I'm afraid, is the Carlin car upside down. Oh. Menez, as I fear, it skates up the escape road straight away. We go safety car, understandably so. The safety car is going to be out for the third time of asking. And that, again, at a fast part of the circuit, contact as one driver was in the slipstream, another tries to defend. We've got eight and three quarter minutes to go. The safety car is deployed once more. And straight away, the marshals and the medical team are there to attend to the situation going up towards Le Combe. But that, as you saw, uh, was a big, big moment indeed. And it is Gustavo Menezes, I'm afraid, who got airborne. And he is the driver then that... Uh, the marshals go and deal with as the rest of the field works its way around the remainder of this 10th lap. The car, look, is being propped up onto two wheels so Gustavo Menezes can wriggle out of it. And the medical team there very, very quickly indeed. The car is righted. And Gustavo Menezes, one hopes, was already out of it before it was dropped down onto the ground. That's the normal procedure that they let the driver out. No, it wasn't. Blimey. I'm astonished. Absolutely astonished because that impact that the car dropped is almost as potentially serious as the one he's just been through. I'm absolutely astounded. Absolutely astonished. I mean, thankfully, he can walk away from it. Oh, it's happened. I've lost my words after all these years. It's happened. I have never I seen get... you so bereft. I mean, it's common sense. You don't give the guy another potential back or neck injury by dropping the car on the ground. Oh, yes, you do. Have I entered a parallel universe in this race or something? I mean, I've never... I know I didn't go to Monza, and that was pretty larry, but I can't remember a race like it. Let's have a look what happens. He's tucked up behind Brandon Maisano, and there just isn't room for the both of them. And as he clips him, the air gets underneath. There's one impact, look, against the wall. He skates along upside down. There's a second impact as it comes back down onto the ground. I mean, that's a terrifying situation yes. for the driver. You don't know where you are, what you're going to end up hitting next. Thankfully, it comes to a, a halt. <laughs> but then, prop it up on two wheels and let him scramble out, please. There'll be British marshals, I'm sure, watching this, thinking we wouldn't do it like that. And there's a good reason. Thumbs up from... I mean... <laughs> I'm, this bloke's made of steel. Isn't he? Absolutely. Absolutely. If ever you want a stuntman for a film, Gustavo is your man, because clearly he's indestructible. <sighs> well, the best news of all of this is that he walks away yes. from what was all round a pretty unpleasant experience.